Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we're joined by Rebecca Cooper Knowles, the Vice President of Operations for Medical Group here at Intermountain Healthcare, as well as the Chief Nursing Officer for Community Based Care. We're going to be discussing the recent transition that Utah has that went from yellow to orange, or sorry, orange to yellow, and what that means for Intermountain in our community. Rebecca, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Absolutely. So why has it been so important for Intermountain and other healthcare systems to postpone certain clinical visits and services from the very beginning of this? Yeah, it's a great question. Really, our goal has been to keep people safe. Um, so we want to make sure we're protecting high-risk patients as well as protecting lower-risk patients, um, using social distancing and um, sort of delaying non-essential procedures and non-essential care whenever possible. Uh, so that, that's what's been probably the biggest change. But the other thing that's really exciting is we've been able to launch video visits. So it's still possible to get great care without coming in person. And I think that's really important for people to know too, is that there is that option uh, right now. And I'm assuming it'll continue through the future that this telemedicine option will be something that people utilize. And I know now with the transition to yellow, we're opening up certain clinical services. Why are we doing that at this time? Well, with the yellow designation, it seems that it's uh, Able, we're able to provide care safely in the clinic that we, when we were in a red category, we weren't providing. So yellow means it's okay to come in and get some of the care we were deferring before. And generally speaking, that may be things like preventive care or even basic services like immunizations um, and visits that you might have normally done via video when we were in red. Um, probably some of those are fine to come, go ahead and come on in to get the care for. Let's talk a little bit about specifics too. Uh, which clinical visits and services will we continue and which ones are we going to start rescheduling? Mm -hmm. Well, um, certainly there were some types of appointments that were put on hold and we think about routine eye exams and uh, routine physicals. In a red phase, those were deferred. And um, hopefully people had an interaction with their provider's office and they said, well, you know, we'll call you when it's safe to come back in. Um, and if you need any care in the interim, let's do it by video. Uh, so now we have lots of our clinics and lots of our physician offices calling the patients to let them know it's time to come back in, it's okay, and we can get you scheduled. Uh, the other option is if you have a service that you think it might be okay to come in and you're feeling ready, you could just give your provider's office a call and they'll help you determine if it's the right timing. In yellow, we still have um, some concerns and we wanna make sure everyone is safe, so we're being very cautious. And there are patients who are high risk for complications if they were to get coronavirus. And um, we wanna make sure those patients, generally speaking, are still staying at home and isolating and making sure that they're taking care and protecting their health. And the process for when they actually get to the hospital will still stay the same. They'll still get checked in, mm -hmm. receive a mask if they don't have one, and be screened, is that correct? That's right, so all of our visitors and all of our patients who come to our clinics or to our hospitals still have the temperature screening. We are asking the screening questions that um, could help us understand if you might have had an exposure or a risk for being COVID positive. And, um, and then we do ask that if you have a cloth face covering, that you go ahead and bring that with you to your mm -hmm. appointment. If you don't have one, that's okay. Please come on in, we can get you um, some coverage for that. So if the state starts to see more COVID-19 cases pop up, if we see an increase versus that decline we're hoping for, uh, will we end up canceling some of the clinics and services that we're offering right now? Yeah, we probably would. I think it's really important as healthcare providers that we're being responsive to the types of cases we're seeing in the community and that we're doing our part to keep our community safe and healthy. So if we see an increased number of COVID cases, then we may have to reevaluate if we're really needing to be in yellow or if we should be in orange or even back to red again. And that might vary by the geographic location within our state because there's quite, our state's pretty large and there's a variation between what happens maybe in St. George mm -hmm. to what's happening in Logan or even Salt Lake County or in, for instance, Park City. That actually brings up a good point because there are a couple of counties that are still considered that orange um, phase. Right. If we have hospitals or clinics in those areas, are they staying in the orange clinic services um, or are they kind of following suit with the rest of Intermountain? Yeah. So it's a little bit complicated, but the uh, governor's office has declared the orange 
uh, sort of the areas that are like Salt Lake County is orange. I think actually is yellow, but Salt Lake City is mm -hmm. orange. Um, and some of those areas, that designation is really for businesses. Okay. Healthcare actually has a set of recommendations that's created by the Utah Hospital Association, um, the Utah Medical Association, and a group of um, physician leaders who come together to decide, is it safe to do surgery? Is that yellow? Is that orange? Or is it red? And those recommendations go to the governor's office and they also agree and approve those types of what are we doing in healthcare versus what are we doing in the community. Um, my understanding right now is that actually for surgery across the state, um, the Utah Medical Association, the UHA, have agreed that we're in a yellow category for surgery. Okay. So sometimes the category that's open for businesses and general use isn't exactly the same category. Healthcare has their own stipulations, and we are working very hard to make sure people are safe in our facilities. But getting surgery is typically something that's very important for people in terms of maintaining their health. Um, and so we want to make sure we can do the surgeries that are needed, and that if it's not safe, we would be able to postpone. That's a really good point because I know that from what I've seen, I didn't actually realize that there is those two different uh, yeah. categorizations between healthcare and the community. So I think it's important for people to know that just because the, the state moved to a different color, healthcare might not necessarily be there yet. We're still right. working on the recommendations and making sure the community is safe. You mentioned previously too uh, about the provider calling patients to find out if their surgeries are being rescheduled. Um, can you talk a little bit more about that process and if they're not get getting a call from their provider, what they can also do? Absolutely. So for anyone who had a procedure delayed, a lot of times that a physician or the physician office has stayed in close contact with the patient. So if you were scheduled for a total joint replacement and it was delayed or postponed during red, um, typically that office may have been reaching out to you every couple of weeks to check in, how are you doing? Um, if that didn't happen, or if you haven't been in touch with your provider's office, please feel free to give us a call. We would love to connect with you and help you understand where we're at and if it would be appropriate for that individual to um, move forward with an appointment or with a procedure or a surgery. Like I said, there are some patients and uh, community members who are high risk. And for those people, we are likely still recommending that they postpone unless there's an urgent need. And I guess that's one other point I'd like to make is that for anyone that has an urgent need, they are having chest pain or they broke a leg or they have severe pain in a bone, uh, anything like that, a laceration, we are still open and able to provide safe care for any emergency condition so that you can come to an Instacare or you can go to an emergency department. And we would ask that people don't delay. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen some folks waiting a long time to get care for um, a broken bone or things that are really urgent and we can take care of very safely right now. Yeah, I think that's also very important. You don't want to delay your care to potentially cause issues further down the road uh, for your health. So making sure that you realize that the hospital is safe, our physicians are here to help you. And I think being able to call them and just check in on what's happening with your surgery is a great move. People also want to know when we could potentially open up all clinical services. Um, mm -hmm. I know that's like a magic ball question. We don't know what's going to happen. Um, but what do you think? Do you feel like it's going to be a while before that happens? Um, and if someone is, if we are able to do this, um, how long could it take someone to get their issue taken care of? If mm -hmm. they're getting rescheduled, is it like a long wait for mm -hmm. that to happen? Yeah. So right now we actually have a lot of capacity. So we have the ability to see um, patients almost same day okay. right now because we have seen a reduction in volume with our higher risk patients really needing to go with the video visits, which um, you know a lot enables us to almost care for more people than we did previously. So when we are able to go to green or back to normal, I, I guess maybe our new normal because we don't yet have a vaccine for COVID and um, COVID will still be in our communities. Um, we, I'm not sure when that will be, but I, I think we're gonna have to go slowly to figure that out from a healthcare perspective. Mm -hmm. The community may move to green for business purposes um, and we'll just have to see what that means in healthcare so we can make sure we're keeping our caregivers safe and that all of our healthcare workers are here and ready to serve our patients and our communities if any emergencies were to crop up. So there's some things we'll have to weigh, um, but when, when we are open to green or even right now in yellow, um, we have a lot of capacity and are able to get people in relatively quickly. So I would just encourage anyone who has a need to call their physician's office or their provider office and see, um, talk with them and the nurses or the care team there, and they can help you figure out 
how soon to get in and um, if it's safe to come in, uh, depending on your risk category. And with the risk as well, you mentioned high risk could potentially mm -hmm. still be pushed off. Is that still yeah. following the guidelines of the state health department, the CDC, over 65 pre-existing conditions? Um, is there a place for someone to find out what would qualify them as high risk to not get their surgery redone? Yeah, I think the best way to deal with that would be having a discussion or a dialogue with your provider office because there are some um, people who are over 65 that are incredibly healthy and they probably would be relatively, in the higher risk category, they would be a lower risk. Mm -hmm. um, yet there are other people that are younger and have a number of chronic conditions, and maybe they have diabetes or they have heart issues or they have high blood pressure, or um, maybe they have issues with obesity or other chronic health conditions that create it to be a higher risk category. So I would definitely recommend that consultation by phone with your provider to figure out if where do you fall and what's safest for you as an individual? So if someone does get their surgery rescheduled, are they going to be tested for COVID-19 uh, before they actually have their surgery happen? Yes, there is a preoperative procedure that we're following and it includes getting tested for um, COVID in advance of your surgery to make sure that you don't have any symptoms and that you are negative. The test is really sort of one moment in time. It doesn't, it's not a guarantee. Right. And so we are asking people to take extra precautions before their surgery and really take, um, even though we may be in yellow in the community, we're asking people right before your surgery to really use extra precautions and self-isolate, stay that, keep that social distance. Don't go out in the community and do things before you have surgery. So we could really make sure that you're at the safest uh, position possible to have a surgery. And that includes symptomatic and asymptomatic people, correct? It's everyone who has a surgery. It doesn't, not just if you're showing symptoms. Yeah, so if you're having symptoms of COVID and you were scheduled for surgery, that's something you would absolutely need to share with your provider. And then it would, you would have to decide, is this an elective procedure? Um, and if you were COVID positive, we still are able to do surgery on people who are COVID positive, um, but typically it's because they have um, emergency medical needs that must be addressed. Um, and we have preferred not to do surgery on people who are COVID positive unless it's absolutely necessary. If people have symptoms, it's really important that we assess those symptoms and try to determine if they are having COVID, if they're COVID positive, or if those symptoms are really something else. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Rebecca, is there anything else that you want to tell the community about what Intermountain is doing right now during this yellow phase? Mm -hmm. I guess I would just want to reassure people that it's still safe to get care and that Intermountain, whether it's our hospitals or our clinics or our Instacares, we are still here for you and we are able to provide safe and necessary care at all times. And certainly for anything urgent, please don't delay. Please come in. We're ready to care for you. Well, Rebecca, thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. And like Rebecca mentioned, you can always call your provider to find out if your surgery is actually being rescheduled or what you need to know. Have a conversation and discussion with them to find out if it's safe for you to come in for that surgery. We still have our COVID-19 hotline available that you can call. That phone number is 844-442-5224. And we also have our emotional health relief hotline available seven days a week from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. That phone number is 833-444. 442-2211. Thanks everyone. We'll see you next time.